Hi, Tamara here. Welcome to my channel. We are getting back to skincare today. Today is part four of a skincare series I started about two months ago. Skincare Basics, Skincare 101, step-by-step -step building blocks of a skincare routine. In the first installment, we covered cleansing, the moisture barrier, as well as sun protection. And in the second episode, we covered the vitamin A derivatives. The vitamin A derivatives, which can help everything from acne to wrinkles. And in the third installment, we delved into the wonderful world of antioxidants. I do have the previous three episodes of this series linked in the description box below in case you missed it. And today we will be exploring exfoliation. So if this sounds interesting to you, I would love it if you would take a moment and give this video a thumbs up. This really helps support my channel by encouraging YouTube to share my videos with other people who might enjoy them. And with that being said, let's jump right into the content of today's video. Before we talk about exfoliation, let's just think for a moment about the skin's function and physiology. As we know, our skin is our body's largest organ system. It's designed to protect us from the environment as well as to hold moisture in. Our skin is a wonderful self-balancing system. And what I mean by that is our skin is constantly creating new skin cells and these new skin cells are pushing older skin cells to the surface where they create our stratum corneum and we've talked about that before. Our stratum corneum is made up of layers and layers of dead skin cells glued together to create a barrier, again keeping pollution and irritants out and moisture in. Our skin is also designed to, as these new skin cells push the old skin cells to the surface, our skin has a natural ability to slough off or shed unnecessary dead skin cells. So it's a t constant dynamic process, new skin cells being created, old skin cells being shedded off. The problem is, is everything slows down as we get older. Not only is our new skin cell production slowing down, but our body's ability to shed or slough off these dead skin cells also slows down. And this can lead to a buildup or an accumulation of dead skin cells. And when we get too large of a buildup of dead skin cells, it can make our skin look dull, leathery, dry and flaky, it can clog our pores, it can, increase our, it can increase the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles, it can actually increase the appearance of hyperpigmentation because those dead skin cells are holding on to that pigment. All in all, an over accumulation of dead skin cells stuck to the surface of our skin is not a good look. So that's where we can assist our body's natural process with some exfoliation. And exfoliation, whether it's physical or chemical, and we'll talk about that in a moment, can, exfoliation can do amazing things for the appearance of our skin. Instantly, can make our skin look brighter, fresher, less textured. It can reduce the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. It can reduce the appearance of pores. It can reduce the appearance of pigment. All in all, it can make our skin look healthy and glowy. Another benefit of exfoliation is that by removing that excess accumulation of dead skin cells, it can actually help our products, our active products that we are putting on our skin to help our skin. It can help those active products penetrate more readily and more deeply. There are some cons to exfoliation. Number one, it's very easy to overdo. Over exfoliation is worse than not exfoliating at all. And when we overdo exfoliation, we can impair our skin's moisture barrier and we know how important our moisture barrier is. And we know it can take quite a while to heal it once it's damaged, it can be very irritating to the skin, and it can actually make some of our problems worse. So what I would say is, you know, like I say with all of my skincare routines, start low and go slow. The other thing exfoliation absolutely does, even when done correctly, is it definitely increases our sun sensitivity because remember those dead skin cells actually have some 
level of protection against sun exposure. So when we are thinning out that top layer of our skin to you know, show the glow, we are definitely making our skin more sensitive to the sun. So daily sun protection, always important. The other caveat with exfoliation is proceed very, very cautiously if you have active acne or active rosacea. There are certain types of exfoliation that people who have active rosacea cannot tolerate, and certainly exfoliation can actually aggravate both of these conditions. So if you have either one of these active conditions, I would really recommend you consult with a dermatology professional of some kind or proceed extremely slowly and cautiously. So there are two types of exfoliation. There is physical or mechanical exfoliation, and that is where we are physically, uh, abrasively scrubbing the dead skin cells off of the surface of our skin. And there's many ways of doing this. First of all, just the act of cleansing your skin, even if you're just using your fingers, does assist our skin to exfoliate some of those dead skin cells. But other exfoliants, other physical exfoliants include scrubs. Remember the St. Ives apricot scrub, right? Pretty abrasive. Buff puff, um, conjic sponges, Clarisonic. There's also the Foreo, it's a very mild physical exfoliation. I'm very interested in trying a Foreo. I have not tried one of those before. And there are spa level physical exfoliation processes such as microdermabrasion. That's usually done in a clinic or a spa, although there are home devices, as well as dermaplaning. And dermaplaning is literally shaving your face. So dermaplaning, again, can be done in a clinic, a spa, or even at home. The cons of physical exfoliation is overdoing this physical abrasive scrubbing type of exfoliation can create micro tears in your skin, again, leading us down the road to potential irritation, infection, inflammation, and again, potentially impairing our skin's moisture barrier. Then there's chemical exfoliation. This is your AHAs, such as glycolic and lactic, your BHAs, such as salicylic acid, and there's even something called PHAs, polyhydroxy acids, and those are the most gentle of the three categories. So how these acids work is that they get, you apply them to your skin, and they literally dissolve the glue that's holding those dead skin cells tightly to the surface of the skin. AHAs, BHAs, PHAs can be found in a multitude of skincare products. They're found in toners, cleansers, serums, masks. So be very careful to, you know, look at your ingredient list because you don't want to be layering too many of these acids into your skin routine. It's very easy to overdo. So let's talk about the ingredients to look for. With the AHAs, we have glycolic acid, and that is the stronger of the AHAs. It is a water-soluble, smaller molecule that penetrates easily into the surface of the skin. It can be drying, but it, overall it's fairly gentle. Again, depending on the strength, it's available from 5% on to you know, a, a very high percentage. And then there's lactic acid. Lactic acid is a larger molecule than, gly than glycolic acid, so it's a little bit gentler, a little bit milder. And lactic acid actually, so it can actually help hydrate your skin. Then there's the BHAs, beta hydroxy acid, and primarily we're talking about salicylic acid. Now, salicylic acid is oil soluble, and because it is oil soluble, it does penetrate more deeply into the skin. Salicylic acid is a gold standard treatment for acne. It is very good for oily skin. It's very good to, you know, clean out impurities in your pores and reduce blackheads. It is much more drying than the alpha hydroxy acids, but it is a very effective chemical exfoliant. There's also enzymes, for instance, pumpkin enzymes, um, all types of different fruit enzymes, and these are the gentlest, the mildest of the chemical exfoliants. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my exfoliation journey and then share some of the products I am really enjoying and that are working for me. 
and I will list all of the products that I talk about in the description box below, as well as I will also link some alternatives or suggestions for other products that, that I know are highly rated. So my exfoliation journey, you know, back in the day when I was in my 20s and 30s, all we had really was, you know, cleansing scrubs and buff puff. And did I ever use them? I loved the apricot cleansing scrub from St. Ives and I used the buff puffs. You know, my skin was much younger. I could tolerate it. As I got into my 40s and I started on my Retin-A journey, I started to really struggle with the Retin-A peelies, as I call them. So that's when I went into Clarisonic, and I used that for many years. And I would go to my dermatology office and get microdermabrasions every few months, and that really helped. But nothing ever really kept those Retin-A peelies at bay. They would get better. I would say I had peeling skin 80% of the time enter YouTube about five years ago and I started hearing about chemical exfoliants. First of all, the word chemical sort of scared me. And second of all, the word acid was very scary. Glycolic acid, lactic acid, salicylic acid. I was very, very intimidated to try any of these products. But one day I was in Target and I happened to see the Pixie Glow Tonic, which I had heard about many times before. And as I looked at the ingredients list, it said it was very gentle, 5% glycolic acid, which I knew was low, a low percentage. And it also had on the ingredients list, aloe and urea and panthenol. So I thought, I'm gonna give it a try. Again, I was very cautious. So I did a tiny little patch test, waited 24 hours, no problem. Then I applied it to my face one day, waited to see what happened no irritation, no problem. And over a period of several weeks, I built up my application of my Pixie Glow Tonic to pretty close to daily. And you know what happened? My Retin-A peelies completely were eliminated. It was a dramatic change in the texture and the appearance of my skin. Not only did the Retin-A peelies disappear, but my skin had a beautiful glow, which it had not had before. So I thought, okay, well, if I'm tolerating the 5% glycolic acid so well, maybe I can up that a little bit. So I got the Pixi Overnight Skin Treats 10% Glycolic Acid Serum. My skin could not tolerate this. It would sting, it would burn, I would have to rinse it off. You know, the difference between a 5% gentle glycolic acid toner to a 10% glycolic acid serum is dramatic. I cannot tolerate the stronger serum. I, I keep it around sort of to treat milia. I will use this as a spot treatment to sort of break down that keratin. And actually this has helped me get rid of a couple of milias. So I do keep it on hand. I wanted to try an exfoliating mask. So I bought the Drunk Elephant TLC Sukari Baby Facial. This is 25% AHA and 2% BHA. Once again, I was nervous, so I did a patch test. No problem, it does tingle and almost on the border of stinging, but not, you know, not that I couldn't tolerate it or not that it scared me. So I applied this to my face one night Oh my gosh, my skin felt like a baby's bottom after I rinsed this off. Following the directions, I left it on for 20 minutes, rinsed it off, and my skin was like a baby's bottom. So I have actually used up two of these Drunk Elephant Sukari Baby Facials in the last couple of years, but it's $80, okay? Recently, I discovered the Ordinary AHA BHA Peeling Solution and I put these side by side. And actually, four girlfriends and I put these on a side by side test. I will link that video below. We did one side with the Zucari Baby Facial. We did the other side with the Ordinary. There was no difference in the effectiveness of these two masks. Both of them gave us baby skin results. 
However, I will say, one of my girlfriends found the ordinary way too irritating and her skin did stay red and irritated for a couple of days. I, I had encouraged her to do a patch test, but she said, no, no, no. Anyway, it was fine. Keeping in mind, the ordinary is 30% AHA and the drunk elephant is 25% AHA. So the ordinary definitely is stronger. Anyway, the ordinary is under $10. I ha this is empty, this drunk elephant is empty. I just sort of keep it around for comparison purposes. I did love the drunk elephant, and if the ordinary is too strong for you, the drunk elephant may be worth it to you. You know, if you can get it on sale, it, you can get it at a better discount. I did use two of these up over a period of two years, and I loved them. Now, if you are doing a mask, Make sure you follow instruction. The drunk elephant says two or three times a week, as does the ordinary. I only used these once a week. I'm pretty conservative when it comes to my exfoliation. I would rather under exfoliate than over exfoliate. Recently, my friend Jen, who has the channel Jennifer Joyce Beauty, she interviewed the creator of a new product line called Bay Harbor Beauty. And the creator's name is uh, Julie. And Jen did an interview with her and I was so impressed with her scientific knowledge and the way she talked about formulating her products that I bought several products. And my favorite product that I purchased from Bay Harbor Beauty, and this is available on Etsy, and I will link that video below as well as the um, Etsy place where you can order this. This um, pumpkin enzyme face mask. This is an exfoliating mask. I will read you the ingredients. It has beta-glucan, beta-glucan, pumpkin enzyme, squalene, beet sugar extract, 5% lactic acid. It also has sake, so we know that's an antioxidant, glycerin, vitamin E, sea buckthorn. It is beautifully formulated. It is very effective but yet gentle. Again, when you apply this mask and leave it on for 10 minutes as directed and rinse it off, your skin will feel like a baby's bottom. So currently, so currently I am using the Ordinary peeling mask once a week and the Bay Harbor Beauty pumpkin enzyme mask once a week. On the nights that I use these masks, keeping in mind, these are heavy duty masks. So on the nights that I do use these masks, I absolutely skip my Retin-A and I do not put any potentially irritating actives on my skin. I just go in very gently afterwards with, for instance, my, I'll go in with my, my Sama Green Rooibos Pressed Serum, very gentle. I'll go in with my Coenzyme Q10 and I'll put a really nice rich moisturizer on because you don't want to put any other potentially active, irritating actives on your skin on the night that you do this be these beautiful masks. And more recently, I've been very interested in exploring lactic acid because we know lactic acid is very good for dry, mature skin. It is gentle, it is gentler than glycolic acid, and it is hydrating. So I have purchased the Ordinary 5% Lactic Acid Serum. And I have been using this instead of my Pixi Glow Tonic in the morning. My skin is tolerating it beautifully. And as you can see, I've, I've been using it for a few weeks. I also purchased the Lactic Acid 10%. So my goal is to use the 5% and maybe work up to the 10%. So my current chemical exfoliation routine is 5% lactic acid in the morning and once a week I use the ordinary AHA peeling mask and then once a week I use my Bay Harbor Beauty uh, pumpkin enzyme mask. I also do some physical exfoliation although I do very mild physical exfoliation because again physical exfoliation is just so easy to overdo. So when I cleanse my skin, I am doing physical exfoliation. One of the tools I found that I'm really enjoying is this little silicone nubby pad. 
And in the evening, when I am doing my second cleanse with my cleansing cream, I will use this to work the cleansing cream into all the nooks and crannies. And this provides a very, very nice, very gentle ex physical exfoliation. And then I rinse the cream cleanser off. And then for a final rinse, I give my face a good gentle wipe down with my makeup eraser microfiber cleansing cloth. This is very soft, but yes, in fact, it does do some physical exfoliation. So on a daily basis, I am physically exfoliating my face during my cleansing routine. The other physical exfoliation that I do about every two, three, or four weeks is I dermaplane my face. I shave my face. Not only do I love getting rid of the peach fuzz, but by using these tinkle razors, I can actually, you actually get sort of some of the surface dead skin off your face. I have a video where I demonstrated dermaplaning or shaving my face with the, um, with the tinkle razors and I will link that below. This, I mean, I love shaving my face. Not only am I getting the dead skin cells off, but my skin glows afterwards and again, on the days where I am doing any kind of microdermaplaning or shaving my face, I do not use any harsh active ingredients. I skip my vitamin C that day. I just keep it really, really gentle with antioxidants and moisturizers. Again, I mean, I just love my Mysama Pressed Green Rooibos Serum. It is so gentle and soothing. There are lots of other exfoliating agents out there. You can get it in a serum, you can get it in a lotion, you can get it in a mask, and I will list some very highly rated and popular products below in each category. I only have one face and I try products very slowly and carefully. So, you know, I just don't have that much experience because when I find something that works for me, I tend to stick with it. That is my exfoliation routine. And I am telling you between my gentle daily physical exfoliation during my cleansing routine and my gentle daily chemical exfoliation and my twice a week mask and my micro or and my dermaplaning, I have not had any dry flaking peelies from Retin-A. And I do use the strongest Retin-A on my skin every single night. So when you are looking at choosing physical versus chemical, take into consideration your skin type, your skin concerns, and your skin goals. Again, if you are younger and you have problems with oily skin or blackheads or acne, the salicylic acid might work very well for you. If you are older and have drier skin concerns, go with a gentler AHA type of exfoliant. But as we have said in all previous of my skincare series videos, start low, go slow, do a patch test, start once a week, evaluate your skin's response, don't overdo it. Slow and steady wins the race. Okay, we did it once again. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you found it helpful. If you did enjoy this video, I would love it if you would give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I really appreciate the time that you spend with me. I thank you very much for that. And with that being said, please, please take extra good care of yourself so that you can stay safe and healthy. I look forward to seeing you in my video next Sunday and please have a wonderful day. Thank you. Um, exfoliation can make our skin look brighter um, okay, so before, so, you know, there is, there is my Sama um, Green Roy Boys, Green Roy Boys tea, tea Serum, oh gosh, 